All right, welcome back to our Nuggets on the Go episode. Episode number one, Daniel. Oh. Episode four, right? Uh, thank you for joining us. I hope that you enjoy season number two of Nuggets on the Go. We had three episodes previously. Um, and um, all these episodes are a little bit more long form nowadays for season two for Nuggets on the Go. And uh, it's being at on Apple Podcasts as well as uh, Spotify. So thank you for joining us. And uh, also hope that all this content will add value to you as you navigate the rest of the trends in Singapore. So for this season, we want to go a little bit more in-depth, which is why our sessions are a little bit longer. And uh, this time around, we want to chat a little bit more about what is happening to the landed market right now in the year 2021. We are in June right now. So it's the June holidays. Happy holidays to all the uh, parents with kids at home. So it's uh, not an easy period because right now with the heightened measures, um, a lot of children are also at home. Parents are working from home. So uh, we can understand I have four kids and uh, it's not an easy time for my wife as well, uh, especially when we homeschool our kids. So um, a lot of things to get a little bit of adjustment. Uh, but I think end of the day, um, enjoy the family time that you have right now. So we'll chat a little bit about the market because the lender market uh, is getting very, very interesting. And um, last year, during the COVID uh, circuit breaker, uh, if you have recalled, we actually published a couple of um, landed materials as well as in some of our videos, we actually shared that we think that uh, for 2020 is prime time for landed properties. And uh, what do we mean by prime time? Because um, even in the real estate um, scene in Singapore, across different types of asset classes, uh, all the way from uh, condominiums, apartments, to strata landed properties, to pure landed properties, to commercial properties, to industrial properties, there are different seasons and disparities across the asset class. At the same time, within the residential zonings, uh, there are also disparity, whether it's talking about the OCR to the RCR to the CCR region. So, Last year, we forecast that for landed property entry level, especially for inter-terraces that uh, is ranging from the range of $2.5 million to $3 million, we believe that is prime time because of um, various, various different factors. And we actually advise a couple of our clients to step up landed properties last year. And uh, thankfully, they did. And uh, now, I think in the midst of 2021, what is happening right now, just to give an update, is that um, it is almost a little bit difficult to get any landed properties that's below the $3 million mark. Right now, if you search for an, any portals, you want to get an entry-level inter-terrace. Um, and we're talking about freehold and triple nine years uh, leasehold. It's almost impossible to get something below the $3 million mark. Um, and uh, if you are going for something below $3 million mark, you have to go for a little bit more uh, towards the, the brim of the map, uh, which is the OCR zone. And if you're talking about something that is like in D19, D28, D15, D14, it's a little bit difficult to get right now. And every homeowner is now asking for at least the 2.9 mil mark onwards. So what I'm going to do is that I'm also going to record my screens and so that you can see a little bit about um, what are some of the charts that we have came up with. So at uh, Property Loom Brothers, we have a research team and uh, this research team is called PLB Insights Team. So basically, our insights team have came up with a couple of very interesting articles this season for landed properties. All right, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you uh, where to find more information on our website at propertylimbrothers.com. Basically, you just come to propertylimbrothers.com. You can also Google. And there is this uh, button at the top right corner, which is called Insights. Basically, Insights are research and analysis that is being brought forward by our PLB Insights team. They have worked very hard to come up with uh, very interesting content because uh, one of our primary um, purpose in PLB is to bring forward a lot of um, good content for our audience. And um, recently, we're kind of this uh, series at um, talking about landed properties. Right now, we're at article number six. And uh, these are all very interesting articles. Uh, so for example, if you click on this, it'll bring you to series number five. We talk about the evolution of landed properties from the past till date. And in the past, you can get properties at $50,000. Can you imagine? In fact, one of the properties that we have sold last time in Siglap, 
um, we have sold that house twice actually uh, along the Siglap uh, freehold bungalow zoning. So uh, when our first owner um, first bought the place, I believe they bought it at something probably at about $100,000 um, and it's a 6,000 square feet land. So when we sold it the first round in uh, I think the 2010 season, um, it was sold at about 4-point-odd something million dollars. And then when we sold it the second round, I think in year 2017, uh, it was then resold for close to about $9 million. So uh, you can see the, the appreciation in terms of um, the trend, in terms of pro landed properties and how they're doing in Singapore. So especially from this article, we go back um, all the way to history, talk a little bit about how has landed prices been doing. There's also another very interesting article right here is um, on the latest landed home pricing in 2021. So right here, we have segregated landed zonings in terms of regions. Uh, we talk about Northeast region, we talk about East region, we talk about Central region um, as well as um, North plus West. And so we try to cover as much as we can in terms of freehold and 99 years uh, landed property. So at least you get a gauge about what are some of the... Um, budget ranges if you're looking to move towards owning a land itself. So one also very interesting article that I want to point uh, your attention to is this uh, article that we talk about the disparity effect. And um, this is interesting because this is uh, largely what we're going to talk about today. And I want to talk about this portion right here. So we talked about this in the previous episode on why we think that 2021 is also prime time for strata landed properties. The key reason is because we explained in episode number three, number three or number two, uh, I think, strata landed. <laughs> okay, so we talk about the fact that because the entry level for freehold and triple nine years landed properties has already moved past the $3 million range. So um, families that are looking for uh, at least a four to five bedrooms kind of condominiums, they will then fall back towards looking at what is the next available range for a landed property. And that will then fall into the strata cluster landed houses. Uh, whether it's freehold or 99 years, these are all right now very hot favorites right now because they are in the two odd million dollars range. So this is currently... Um, uh, something that's very hot in the market, uh, especially for the first half of 2021, we believe that that will continue to uh, have this spillover effect because um, either families will be looking for this category, which is the strata uh, landed category, uh, or they will look at the inter-terraces, which is also a pure landed category, but they're more of 99 years in nature. For the purpose of today's segment, we're going to talk about the semi-detached landed. And this is exactly what's happening right now in June uh, 2021. And um, my personal opinion and forecast is that this is going to happen for the next two quarters. Uh, what is What am I talking about? Basically is that um, right now, inter-terraces, they have... Uh, been a very hot favorite. Later, I'll show some more very interesting charts that we have done for all uh, districts in Singapore. But I just want to share with you two properties that we have sold recently. One of them is this one at Tambling Road. This property basically was uh, a hot favorite with uh, the East Lovers D15 zoning. Uh, if you have seen this video, I play around with our owner's Alexa system. <laughs> so it was very fun for me because uh, I tried to open up the main gate with the Alexa system as well as the lights and the fan as well. Uh, and it's not easy to build an Alexa system at home because you need to run the internal wiring and all that to keep um, the renovation very neat. Uh, so that's what our owners have invested. So this house has been sold. Um, it's sold... Um, actually above this pricing. So uh, watch out for the caveat when it's being uh, launched. And uh, I don't know how to play the piano. Like, I just had fun with it. Okay, so um, this was a, a inter-terrace uh, that is uh, in the category, I will say C category. I shouldn't say C category. I'll was, I was call it category number three. Okay, so uh, we rank... Um, not say rank, like we kiterize, is there such a word? We kiterize landed properties in four different kinds of ranges. The first one belongs to the landed properties that will need a total rebuild. So largely very old single story landed properties. The moment you buy, you have to tear down and rebuild. And then the second category will be properties that are in the 20 to 30 years old range. Uh, you buy, likely you need to do A and A. You need to probably do an interior renovation, three to six hundred thousand dollars. 
Third category will be like this one right here at uh, Tambling. Properties that you can buy and move in straight on. Renovation is very uh, new, modern, uh, fantastic and uh, largely below 10 years old or maybe 10 years or slightly older but um, something that uh, is modern and uh, timeless because it's been constructed recently. And of course, the fourth category will be something that you buy straight off from the developer's market. Uh, largely developers that are into the, the business of buying very old landed properties, rebuilding that and then selling off in the resale market. So four categories. This falls into category number three. And then there's also another one right at Cutmel Road. Also step up very quickly. Uh, at the uh, Cartmel region, uh, D15. This also falls into category number three. So what is happening right now is that if you want to get category number four, which is the brand new, brand new type, D15, you would have to come up with at least a 4.3 to $4.5 million range. I would say that at least you have to be prepared to spend at least $4.5 million range for inter-terrace. Um, so what is happening right now is that the moment when you see category three and four, inching towards the up tier zoning, uh, we have technically moved into the next disparity effect. And uh, the next disparity effect is that um, this is the semi-detached market. And um, I forecast that for the next six to nine months, the semi-Ds that is in the lower tier range of four to $5 million dollars, um, I mean, the lower tier of $4 million is also very hard to find. If you want to buy something at four to $4.5 million, if you see something that is a semi-D, at least a 3,000 square feet land, you should snap it up uh, in the market. So something that is in the four to $5 million kind of range, this will be the next hot favorite in the market. And uh, I think a lot of buyers will then start to move towards that tier because the key reason is because for inter-terraces, um, we think that they are reaching that upper tier mark. And of course, it will still remain a hot favorite because um, right now what's happening in the COVID situation is that for the rebuilding uh, costing uh, by uh, builders and architects, it has technically increased. Uh, in the past, even a rebuild a home, $250 per square foot, $300 per square foot is quite common. Right now, after the pandemic or during the global pandemic, because the material cost has increased, the manpower cost has increased. And always remember, when you buy a pure landed property, you're buying the land. And uh, for pure landed property, we always calculate based on the land PSF. But you're also buying the structure, which is sitting on top of the land. So the structure itself comprises of many components. It comprises of timber. It comprises of uh, metal. It comprises of many different components, marble, it comprises of manpower, it comprises of time, it comprises of opportunity cost, it comprises of uh, expertise. So every singular component to construct the building has increased in price. Right now, you want to rebuild an inter-terrace, at least you have to make sure you have at least $350 to $400 per square foot, which then brings us to probably about $1.2 to $1.4 million. You want to construct a detached, is already inching upwards towards the $550 to perhaps close to $600 per square foot. So it is not getting cheap. I think because of this, um, a lot of the builders, um, they also know that they have to sink in a larger amount of time. I mean, let me just break it down for you again, the time that you need to construct a landed property. Three to six months, you need to sit down with your architect and builder. Three to six months, you need to wait for BCA submission. 12 to 16 months construction period. All in, it's about 24 months that you need to sink in in terms of the timing to rebuild your home. Therein, I think the category four types of uh, landed property will still remain largely a hot favorite. But I think for inter-terraces, because it's tipping towards that, that range, um, the semi-D will start to move upwards as well. So always remember, um, in two ends of the spectrum for every asset type, even for condos, apartments as well. Uh, but for today's contact, I talk about landed properties. The entry level, which is an inter-terrace, and the highest tier level always will tweak uh, the pricing movement. So for upper tier levels that uh, we're talking about GCBs, I mean, GCB is like a class of its own. The per square foot is continuously rising even though we are in this market situation, a uh, global pandemic. But, you know, every time when there's a crisis, luxury products always go up on its own accord, right? And then on the, the entry level spectrum, this is now a hot favorite since 2020, 12 months ago. And now it's pushing 
inwards towards the semi D zoning. So I think semi Ds and corner terraces will be a hot favorite in the next uh, two quarters. But of course, this is based on my personal opinion. End of the day, if you've watched a lot of our episodes, we always disclaim that uh, do your own homework, do your own financial prudency, talk to your bankers, talk to uh, experts, talk to um, um, your your own uh, um, real estate uh, advisor and, and, and people like that just to get a different opinions, right? Coming back to this chart, I want to show you three... Um, very lengthy research that our team has done. Let me just go to Semi D uh, for illustration. So we have done a very detailed analysis. Oh my goodness, look at this, 34 pages. And uh, we start from D9 all the way 9, 10, 11, and then we go to D28, D5, D10, 11, 13, 14, 15. And uh, we track the PSF movement as well as and let me see, this PSF movement basically starts from 2016. So we did a research for the past five years. And uh, after which, we also look at the price quantum. So we did two ranges of research. One is per square foot price movement. The other one is the overall quantum price movement. Now, if you want to have this very juicy research, uh, you can contact us. And uh, of course, when you come for our PLB, a uh, bias consult session will share with you very in-depth analysis catered to your specific situation. So we do one-to-one -one consults either over Zoom or you can contact us to drop by at our office. Our um, bias consult will be very uh, happy to meet up with you to chat a little bit more about your plans. Now, uh, so this very deep dive research shows the trend uh, in terms of the price quantum movement for D15 semi-D. We think that right now, it has not moved up a lot yet. It is still a very uh, good time for you to enter. And if you look at D19, we think that for D19, just check this out. For the past five years, 2016, the average price range all the way from 2016 to 2019 is still at this three odd million dollars range. Um, it has not even touched the $4 million mark. It's only in 2018. Uh, that the $4 million started uh, to be seen. And then uh, it went out a little bit and then it, it plateaued a little bit. Right now is that this $4 million range, we think that it is prime time, definitely for semi D. I I want to show you the difference here with um, inter-terraces. And uh, when you look at inter-terraces, overall price quantum for D19, uh, have a look at this. The tier has moved up to this range. And uh, take note, this is median. That means you take into consideration a lot of old and new mixed together. But if you look at uh, also the PSF, look at this price movement right here. 2016, 1001 plus, and then 2020, 2021 is inch up to, and this is land price per square foot. So if you multiply by an average of about 1006 to 2000 square feet, you get a total average median price right now, which... Um, in um, so-called summary form, it's very hard to get something below $3 million. Uh, so coming back to the quantum, uh, $3 million for something that is you need to rebuild, $3.5 million to $3.8 million for something that perhaps you don't have to renovate that much. Brand new in D19, at least 4.2 to 4.5. Pretty similar to D15, although D15 is considered like a little bit more big brother than D19. D19, the best two locations will be Serangoon Gardens as well as Coven region, very near to the MRT station. D15, of course, is a more upper tier class because it's more east, is considered the rest of central region, considered city fringe. D19 is considered suburban, but D19 has a very popular landed enclave zoning. The next, of course, very popular one will be um, D28 as well. And D28 has also moved up pretty much um, during this range. Now, I want to come back to this overall trend. Uh, we love to use square foot. Uh, so suggest that you can use that to check out. Let's have a look at this. Green color was this new sale. You click in. Um, why you see that is because there has been a lot of movement for the cluster houses right here. And these are all cluster houses at Riverfront. Uh, if you disregard that and uh, you only look at um, so-called resale, this is the volume. Um, the volume is almost pretty crazy right now. And uh, if you look at D15, volume is also pretty crazy. In fact, overall, for all districts um, combined, 
landed property is really one of the hot favorites right now. In fact, one of the hottest since many years back. If I were to pull this back, uh, the last round it was very hot, 2012 in terms of volume. Right now, it surpassed that last peak. And uh, why is it gaining so much momentum? I think the key rationale is because when new launches per square foot and resale condominiums and apartments per square foot inch upwards, usually... People are looking for a larger size. Um, and the calculation, although for landed properties, is based on the land. But if you take the total build-out area, divide by the overall price, that is based on livable build-out space. It's definitely still lower than uh, if you were to go on to buy a new launch apartment or condo um, resale apartment. But of course, these are two different products altogether. One is a pure landed, no facilities. Um, families that want to have facilities, definitely you go for... Uh, condominiums and apartments. So it's a different world. But of course, as um, so-called Singaporeans, uh, even if you are a PR or, f- or a foreigner buyer, you want to take into consideration what is the movement between a set type. So um, this season right now, I think if you can, try to hunt for four to five million dollar ranges of semi-detached uh, houses in D19 or D15. If you are in different parts of zoning, Take note of what is the price movement of the inter-terraces first before you decide whether the semi-detached pricing is something that you want to enter into. So of course, you will go, you are going to find different types of categories between the semi-Ds as well. There's going to be semi-Ds that you need to rebuild, semi-Ds you need to A and A, semi-Ds you need to you can move in, and brand new brand new semi-Ds definitely in the ranges of between six to eight million dollars. So you need to see what is your time horizon. Are you okay to perhaps enter into a semi-D? Go for older build first, maybe. Um, just renovate a little bit to $300,000 and then maybe after three to five years, you want to rebuild. That's still a possible option. But most importantly, enter into the market first. Um, have the land under your portfolio first. And we think that uh, landed property is definitely prime time for at least the next five to eight years. In fact, I think it's going to be a very long lasting effect with more and more people appreciating landed property. So that's all for this, this uh, episode number four. We're going to see you on episode number five. And of course, meantime, if you have any questions, you can DM us on Instagram. Recently, we started our TikTok channel as well to support us at uh, TikTok. You can uh, look for me at Melvin Lim. Or you can look for us at Property Lim Brothers. We have two different channels talking about two different content. And thank you for supporting us. We wish you uh, all the best. Stay safe. Take care. Take care of yourself and family. Enjoy work while working from home. And we'll see you on the next episode. Ciao. Now all this news here, oh my goodness, negative demonstration. So sorry, man. Let me, <laughs> let me just lock out and lock it again. Okay, let's come in. Okay.